In this lesson, learn about the settings for simple time entry for the back office and mobile app. If your company has a subscription license, you can use simple time entry to enter and review time. Even if you do not use the mobile app time entry option, you can utilize the simple time entry as a way to enter and review time in Sage 100 Contractor. Before you enter time in 562, use option 566 time entry settings to define how elements display and what the process is for your company. Let's open 566 time entry settings. When the window opens, you see several tabs. On the payroll periods tab, identify the pay periods to include for enter, recap, and filter options. When you set up employees in 521, on the Compensation tab, you select a pay period for which they are paid. Select the boxes for which you want to view employees with that pay period type in the Simple Time Entry tasks. Then, for each pay period type you select, identify when the pay period ends. When you select Weekly, Select the day of the week the pay period ends. When you select biweekly, select period end date for the last pay period of the prior year that was paid in the current year. For example, if the first paycheck for the current year was paid on January 1st and the pay period associated with that check ended on December 26th, select that date. On the list of dates for the pay period, this is the first date for the current year shown in tasks. For semi-monthly, type the day of the month the first pay period ends. Then type the day of the month for the second pay period. Note that for the second pay period, a day of 28 through 31 assumes the last day of the month, no matter how many days are in that month. For monthly, type the day of the month end. An entry for 28 through 31 assumes the last day of the month, no matter how many days are in that month. When you open a task, such as Approve Time, and look at the pay period type, you see an option in the drop-down list for each pay period type you select in the settings. Then, in the pay period list, you see the pay periods for that type. When you select the filter you want, the grid displays only the associated records for that pay period and type. You only need to select the pay period types you use in your company. On the Company Settings tab, choose the Interval for Time Entry. The options include 15-minute, 6-minute and 3-minute intervals. Notice the decimal version to the right in parentheses. Quarter hour, tenth of an hour, and twentieth of an hour. The time entry displays in decimal format. Choose the option that most closely matches the way your company accounts for time. In the option below, when an employee submits their time in the mobile app, you can include a certification statement the employee agrees to when they submit time. The text can include anything important for your organization. An idea is they certify the hours they submit are accurate to the best of their knowledge, or that they take their breaks as required by law. In the text, you might also include a statement that an employee reports any accidents or injuries they witness. Select the box for additional notes in which the employee can describe such incidents or any other notes. When you use simple time entry, you must process the time entries. You have two options on how to do this. The first is to send time entries to 551 Daily Payroll as you approve them and create time cards from within that module. The second option is to use 565 Create Time Cards to generate payroll records directly in 522 at each pay period end. Choose the option you want. 
You can only change your option if all current entries are processed. You should not switch to a different processing method in the middle of a pay period. Most likely, if you currently use 551 Daily Payroll, you will choose to send time there. If you do not use 551 Daily Payroll entry, select to use 565 Create Time Cards to generate the payroll for 522 payroll records. Other than the certification checkbox, these two tabs are the primary time entry settings for simple time entry in the back office in Sage 100 Contractor. On the additional tabs, select Settings for the mobile app, which is available for iOS or Android devices. The first tab is Time Off Settings. If you want to allow employees to enter time that is not regular or overtime, choose what time off to allow and the label to display in the mobile app. The additional options include sick, vacation, and holiday. The list of labels is static for translation purposes and you cannot make changes to labels. If you do not select the options here, the mobile app users do not see the time off option on the menu in the mobile app. When you allow employees to enter other time off types, you can also choose to show the available time off balance in the app. However, this only displays based on the last process payroll, not including any current time off requests. On the mobile jobs tab, you choose the jobs to display in the mobile app. The list in the box is what displays for the job selection in the mobile app. Click Add Jobs to view your entire list of jobs. Select the status to filter for current jobs. Double click on a single job to insert in the list. Switch to multi-select mode to insert more than one job at a time. Double click to select each job to include, or click and drag to select a range of jobs. Click Insert Selected Items to populate the job list. We'll return to the Mobile Jobs list. If you no longer want to see a job in the list, click on the job or jobs in the list and click Remove Job. On the Mobile Cost Codes tab, select the cost codes to include as a generic list of cost codes. Likely, you do not want to display the cost codes that will not be used in the mobile app. For example, cost codes such as contingency or permits, or if you have equipment maintenance cost codes. This is referred to as the complete generic cost code list for the mobile app. However, if you enter budgets for a job and input labor dollar amounts, the list you see in a job-specific cost code list in the mobile app is based on the cost codes that have a labor budget. If there are no labor budget amounts for the job, the full generic list displays in the app. In this lesson, you learned about the settings for simple time entry for the back office and mobile app. Continue to the next lesson to learn about the setup to enable the mobile app.